Hi there, it's Mario here with a new Ruby 2D tutorial. In our last session, we went through drawing 2D shapes to the screen and responding to user mouse clicks. Uh, if you haven't seen that video already, go check it out because we're gonna be expanding on what we've learned there today. Uh, this week I'm excited because we're going to be recreating the classic game Snake, which is gonna be a lot of fun. So let's have a look at the game that we're gonna be building. So this is the version of Snake we're going to end up with. First thing you notice is the snake is going through the walls. I really like this version of snake where you can go through the walls. We've got the score in the top left, so we're starting at zero. I'm gonna control the snake using the arrow keys on my keyboard. So once I collect this yellow dot, the food there, the snake's gonna grow. So it will just get progressively longer and longer until it's hard to manage. You'll note that the speed's not changing. So it's the same speed throughout. Um, something that might be a little nice little bonus would be just to make it go faster once you collect each bit of food. And then if we crash into ourselves like this, you'll notice that the it says game over. We've got our score here, I've got 12. And then if we press R on the keyboard, which I'll do, you can see it just starts back up again. So that's what we'll end up with. Let's get stuck into some code. Here I've got in my editor my Ruby 2D program. So far we're just requiring the library and setting the background to a navy color. So when we run this program, you'll notice that we've just got a background color, but nothing else. So let's start drawing some objects. So the first thing we'll draw is our snake object. So it's simply gonna be a few boxes on the screen. Now I'm just gonna set a starting position for the snake. So it'll just be the same each time. We can change that later if we want to. So let's do that. I'm gonna create a snake class, first of all. Okay, and we're gonna have an initializer for that. Uh, and when we start the snake, we're gonna set some initial positions so where we want the boxes to appear. So if you think about the snake game, we can break down the screen into discrete boxes. We've got these imaginary grid lines on our screen and every single time we draw, we're gonna draw within that grid. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually define what size grid we want. So I'm gonna say, uh, let's say grid size is 20. And so every single time we draw something, we're going to have uh, 20 pixels. Now, the width of our window, so it's 640. So width is 640 by default and the height equals 480. Our grid size is going to be 32 by 24. So let's now set where the snake will start. To do that, I'm just gonna create a array called positions. So the positions will hold each of the squares that the snake currently occupies. And we're just gonna pick some here that will be sensible for us to start at. So inside our array, I'm just gonna give it a set of arrays and that'll have the X and the Y coordinates for each of our grid positions. So we're gonna start at the very top. So the Y is going to be zero and a couple bo boxes down from the, uh, in from the left, sorry. So we're gonna start at two, zero will be our first one. And then we'll just move the, we'll have the snake start vertically. So from zero, we're gonna increment that. So the next one will be two, one, uh, followed by two, two, uh, and then lastly, two, three. Okay. And so this should have our snake be a straight line from the top going from the bottom, a little bit in from the left side of the screen. Now we're gonna to wanna to draw a, a square for each one of these positions. So I'm gonna create a method called draw. And what we'll do, we will loop through each of the positions. So each do position. So this position here will be one of these arrays with the X and the Y coordinates. And for each of those, we're going to draw our, uh, a new square. So let's do that. So square.new. We're gonna set our square to be the X here, the first part of our array. And we're gonna times it by, multiply it by this 20 to get our grid size. And we're gonna do the same for the Y. So rather than being two pixels inwards, it's going to be two times 20. So it's gonna be 40 pixels inwards. So the Y will be position one times our grid size. 
Uh, and then we're going to set the size of each of the squares to be the grid size. And we're going to set a color here. So on our navy background, let's make the each box appear white, let's say. Okay, so let's now create our snake and let's call draw. So I'm going to say snake equals snake.new and then we're going to say snake.draw. Let's see if we can draw our snake to the screen. Beautiful. So here it's drawing our snake. We're coming in from the top. The one thing I'd probably like is just a one pixel space around each of the squares. So what we might do here is rather than having the size of each of the squares be the full grid size, if we remove one away from that, we'll have a line uh, around uh, between, sorry, each of the boxes of the snake. So let's try that. Okay, that's looking a bit better now. So now snake has these nice little lines on it. So what we want to do now is we want the snake to move. So without any input from us, the snake's constantly going to be moving and it's going to be going into a direction. So we're going to have to move this. And the way we're going to do that is we're simply going to add a new square here and then we're going to remove that old square from the positions array here. So we're going to need to do this on each frame that's drawn. And this is going to be our first look at a, a game loop. So here in our Ruby 2D program, if we say update and give this a block of code, this block of code will run for each frame that's shown on the screen. So let me simply just print out a dot and run our program. And you notice that it's drawing now a lot of these dots in my terminal. And that's because each time we draw a frame, it's printing out one of these dots. So rather than printing out a dot, we just want to move our snake downwards. That's going to require us actually clearing out all of the objects on our screen. So the boxes we've gone, we're going to clear them out. Otherwise, we're going to start drawing over the top of them. So we want to clear the screen each time. And then we're going to say snake.draw. Let's create a new method called snake.move. And the move method, we will update these positions here. So we're going to need a starting direction here. So let's set the direction to be down. And in this move method here, now we're going to change this array. Okay, so we'll just address the down direction to start with, and then we'll worry about the other ones just in a moment. So we're going to say, uh, let's say case direction. And we're going to say when down. So when the direction is down, the first thing we want to do is we want to remove the first part of this snake here. So we're going to say positions dot shift that will remove this last one here. Let's see if we can run that code. So what'll, what I expect to happen is our snake will, will kind of shrink. So positions. Let's try that again. And you can see that our snake's now no longer visible. Because of the high frame rates, this is running at 60 frames a second, it's very difficult to see what's happening. So the first thing that we want to do is remove or lower, sorry, that frame cap. So let's say here, we're going to say set FPS cap. So let's just do it one frame a second. So we'll be able to see very slowly our snake disappearing. Cool. And you can see that it's correctly removing that last box. So now all we need to do is add a new box. Okay, so that's good. So regardless of what direction you're moving, you always need to remove the last one. And then here, when we go down, we want to grab this, um, this one here. So we want to grab the head of the snake. So let's make a method to return that. Let's call it head there. Um, and that will return positions.last. So when we call the head to get the head of the snake, the first bit of the snake, it should return this here. So we're going to add something new to the position. So let's say 
positions.push. And we're going to say uh, this one here will be, uh, so when we're going down, what do we need to do? We need to, our uh, X will be the same. So this can be head zero, and then it'll be head Y. And if we're going downwards, we need to increment our Y. So it'd be head plus one. Okay, let's see what happens. Head one, sorry. So this part, the Y. Ah, sorry, I need to put a brace there. Beautiful, okay, great. So now our snake is moving. We're gonna speed up our frames a second to something more reasonable now. Let's say 20. Uh, and now it's disappearing forever. So the next thing we might want to do is look at how we can control that snake now with the keyboard. So we're going to have to look at some keyboard input. Similarly, similarly to our mouse, it's the uh, we've got an event uh, listener which we can add. So if we say on key down, uh, this event will then have the the key that is pressed. So let's start printing these out. So I'm going to say uh, print uh, event dot key. So print event dot key, and that will tell us which key is being. Let's say put event dot key. That will then print out which key gets pressed down. Cool. So we've got a string here which is down, right, up, and left. So now that we can print out which direction we've pressed on the keyboard, we can then use that to change the direction of our snake. So we're going to do a case on this event key. Case event dot key. And we're going to say when, uh, we're going to say when, well, actually we don't need a case. We can say uh, if up, down, left or right. So if our key is any of these, key, then we're just going to say set the direction of our snake. So we'll say snake.direction equals event.key. Beautiful. So now that we can set the direction, we now need to make the snake do different things. So when we're down, we'll increment the y. When we're up, then we will increment, uh, we will take away the Y. When we're left, we will take away the X and not the Y. And when we're right, we will add to our X. So let's give that a go. So I'm going to press the, whoop. okay, so I'm getting an error out. We can't set this direction. So to be able to change this, I need to add an attribute writer here for the direction. Awesome. So you can see it's not too much code. We're already controlling our snake. That's beautiful. The one thing we will need to fix is this. So if you look at what I'm, what's happening with the snake, I'm pressing the left and the right arrow keys and the snake's going back into itself and then, uh, and then kind of going through. So we, we want to prevent that from happening. If I'm going down, I shouldn't be able to go up. If I'm going right, I shouldn't be able to go left. So we're going to have to add a little check here to fix this. So here I'm going to say, uh, if snake can change direction to a key, then we'll do this. So we'll add a new method and that will tell us whether or not the next direction is okay based on what we're, with the way, the way we're currently facing. So let's say change direction to new direction. 
and we will say, um, so it's going to depend on our current direction. So we'll say case the current direction and we'll say, so when our current direction is up, then if it's, if new direction doesn't equal down. So when we're up, when we're going up, we can go any direction apart from down. When we're down, we can go any direction apart from up. When we're left, we can go any direction apart from right. And when we are right, we cannot go left. Let's try that out. Got a syntax there, I think that's... Okay, so it's not letting me, you won't be able to see, but I can't change the direction back. So I can only turn nine degrees. So that's all working great. So the next thing we're gonna try and tackle is me going off the screen. So you can see now I can go off the screen, I can come back, everything's okay. So we're gonna make it so that the snake will reappear at the top of the screen if we go from the bottom and out the other side if we go left or right. The way we're gonna do that is simply using a, a simple math trick. So we're gonna head over to the Ruby terminal here. Our grid is 32 by 24. And so if we go through to the right hand side of the screen, what will happen is our X value will be 33. And so it's not gonna be drawn in the visible uh, window. But what we can do is if we take the modulus of that by the actual width, what will happen is it'll return one. So if we have a number that's less than 32, so let's say we're 10, our X is 10, it simply returns 10. But once we go through to the right, you'll notice that it kind of resets. So it'll draw a one here. And if we go through, for example, twice through the right hand side, the number will grow. So let's say we had 80, you notice that the number is put back into the range of zero to 30. 0 to 31 would be the maximum number. So if we have 32, 32, it will say 0, which is all the way on the left-hand side. So we can simply just take the modulus of our x and y values, and that means that when the snake exits one of the sides, so it goes through the top, bottom, left, or right, it will reappear on the opposite side. So let's put that into our code. So what we're going to do is each time we uh, push one of these coordinates, we're going to have a new method that grabs this and then it's going to apply the modulus. Uh, the new private method will be new cohorts, new coordinates, it'll take an x and a y value and it will simply return a new array and that array will have the x modulus. Uh, and we're going to need the width of the uh, window divided by the grid size. So I'm going to create a new constant up here We'll call that grid width, uh, and that's going to be the uh, width of the window divided by the grid size, and we'll also have grid height, which will be the height of the window divided by the grid size. So we're going to use this grid uh, width and grid height, so we're going to take the modulus. So x divided by grid, uh, x modulus, sorry, grid width, and then we're going to have y modulus grid height. And now what we can do is call that method here. So we're going to say new coordinates, each of these lines. Okay. Let's give that a go. It's now reappearing through the different sides. So the next thing we're going to do is to generate our ball. 
to generate the ball, we're going to now create a game class. That game class is going to hold where the ball is. It's going to store our score and a few other things. So let's do that. So I'm going to create a new instance here. So we're going to say game equals game.new. And we're going to create our game class. Now, when we start the game class, we're going to set our score to be zero. And we're also going to generate a position for our ball. So we're going to say ball x equals, let's say, random. I'm going to use the grid size, use the grid width here, and the ball y will be it will be the grid height here. So we've got these random coordinates we're generating. We now need to draw that ball. So we're going to use a similar code to this. Uh, we might change the color rather than having a white ball. We might have a yellow ball. Uh, and yeah, we'll create a draw method here. So let's do that. So we've only got one ball to draw. So the X will just be the ball X times the grid size. Uh, ball X times grid size. And then here will be ball Y times the grid size. You can make this one a bit bigger. That's okay. We don't need to take one because there's no lines we want to draw. And instead of being white, we'll make it yellow. Now, down here, when we draw our snake, we also want to draw the game. Beautiful. Awesome. We might put some text just here, just to say that the current score is zero. So let's also put that into the draw method for the game. So we're going to say, um, what are we going to say? text.new, I'm going to say the content will be score and then your score. Um, and then we'll make it green. So we'll say color green. And we'll indent it a little bit from the top. So let's say x10, uh, y10, make it a bit bigger. So now we should see the player score in the top left as well. Beautiful, that's looking really good. Uh, one thing is we might, yeah, that's okay. Uh, so our snake's going underneath the score, so that's fine. Awesome, so the next step is to detect now when the snake reaches the ball. So we've got the coordinates of the head of the snake, we've got the coordinates of that ball. So we can now check these uh, on each of the frames. So let's do that. So here we're going to put some code just to see if the snake has hit the ball. Now we need the coordinates of the snake. We need the coordinates of the ball. Um, we could have a separate class that kind of knows how to join this up. For the moment, I'm just going to put it on the game class. We can change that later though, if we need to. So I'm going to say, if the game uh, detects that the snake has hit the ball. We'll pass in the snake dot, uh, let's say x and snake dot y. So this will be the coordinates of the of the last position for the snake. So we're going to have to add a few methods to snake x and y. So if that happens, what we want to do is we want to record a hit on our game. So we'll call this hit. Uh, and then also the snake's going to get longer. So let's uh, let's do this first. Let's um, get this working. So if game snake hit ball, snake x, snake y, let's implement the x and y on the snake. So here I'm going to say def x. So the snake's head, uh, the first part of that. So the this head returns an array of two elements, so something like this. And the first one here is just our x. For our y, 
it's just the second part of that array. So that should be good. Snake X, snake Y, so game snake it ball. So let's put that in our game. So this is the X and the Y. So we want to make, we want to compare this. So this X and Y are the uh, position on the grid that the snake's at, and we've got the ball X and Y here. So we're going to say ball X equals the X and ball Y equals our Y. So that'll return true or false. And then game record hit. So if we record hit, what will happen is our score will be incremented by one. And we're going to randomize these here as well. So we'll get a new X and a new Y. Now, there's one thing to consider the randomness might actually put this within the uh, snake, but I don't think it's a, it's a big, big deal there. So that's okay. Awesome. Great, so that's working fine. The score's going up. I should be able to cross the screens and then still get it, which is great. So the next thing we're gonna do is each time the snake gets the ball, the snake's gonna grow in length. So let's add a new method here, snake.grow. And when it's growing, Essentially what we want to do is we want to not do this. So we're going to have a new instance variable on our snake. That's going to record whether or not it should grow for the next frame. Uh, and by default, it should be true. So we're going to say, or false, sorry. So we're going to say growing equals false. And then we're only going to remove this. Um, uh, we're going to say if uh, not growing. So if we're not growing, then uh, remove the last element from the snake. The only thing, um, that's the only thing we're going to do basically, just say don't delete the last one if we're currently growing. So the next thing to do is just set this growing. We're going to set it uh, in the, the record uh, in this grow. So when we call grow here, we're, that's just going to set growing to be uh, true. The growing will get reset each time the snake moves as well. So let's do that. So we're gonna say def grow, and I'll say growing equals true. If we just leave this as true, the snake will just continuously grow. So after each frame here, we're just gonna reset growing to be false. Let's see if our snake now grows. Awesome, I think that was it. Let's yeah, cool. Great, so the score's going up, the snake's getting longer. We now need to look at getting the snake to crash into itself. So you can see here I can go through the body and it's all working fine. So we're going to need to detect that and then show a message on our game. So let's do that. So here in our game loop, we're going to now check to see if the snake's hit itself. So we can just ask the snake, um, have you hit yourself, snake hit itself. And then if that happens, we're going to finish the game. So we'll record if the game is finished. So game.finish. So first is this method here, snake hit itself. Okay, and to do that, what we're gonna do is just use a pretty simple trick. So in Ruby here, if I head over to the console, if I have an array of elements and we have a duplicate, we can ask Ruby to remove the duplicate by calling unique. And when we do that, the length of the array has changed. So here, this is four and then this is three. So if we call unique and length and compare that against the original length, if we have any duplicate elements in the array, then that will return true. So it's as simple as getting all the positions uh, getting an, another array of the unique positions and then just seeing if they're the same length and that will essentially tell us if the snake uh, has two squares that occupy the same the same position. So we've got access to the positions here. So here are our positions. 
and we're simply going to see if these are all unique. So we're going to say if uh, positions, actually we're going to say positions dot unique dot length is the same as, sorry, positions dot length. And that will then tell us if we have any duplicates at all in this array. In actual fact, this should actually be not equal. So the, we want to check if the length of the unique array doesn't equal the length of the array. So that should be not equals here. So now that we've checked to see if the snakes hit itself, the next thing to do is finish the game. So this is going to be a Boolean that we store on the game instance. And when the game starts, finished will be false. Then when we call finish, we're going to set finish to be true. Okay, let's just print out here, finishing. Let's just see if that's going to run and we can see it on our console. You need to get a little bit of length into the snake before you can run into yourself. It's kind of hard when it's small. Now you get to see how bad I am at this game. Okay, good. So I've ran the snake into itself. You can see now it's printing out finishing games. So that looks like it's working. So the next thing to do is get that snake to stop moving. Maybe not show our ball. So we'll hide this, we'll hide that, and then just change the message for our score here. So let's do that. So snake move here. We don't want to do that if finished is true. So let's add a new method just so we can get that value. So we're going to say game.finished, that will return whether or not it's, it's finished. So snake move will be here if, unless game finished, snake.move. So that should stop our snake moving. We also want to hide the uh, the ball. So in the draw here, we'll just say um, unless finished is here. So it should hide the square and hide uh, the ball. Let's give that a go. Again, it's hard to crash when the snake is short. There we go. Great. Ball's hidden, the snakes stop moving. Last thing to do is just change this to say that the game is finished. So I could simply just put a condition here, but instead of doing that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just put the message here into a method. So let's just call that text message. Put that into a private method. And we'll say, um, if the game is finished, uh, we'll put a message, otherwise print out the current score. So when the game's finished, we're going to say game over. Uh, your score was this. And then we're going to say press uh, R to restart. So we're, in a second, we're going to allow the user to restart their game if they press the R key. So let's give that a go. Awesome. So snakes move, stop moving, the ball's hidden. We've got this message. Game over, your score was seven. Press R to restart. Last thing to do is just implement that. So when the um, user presses the R key on the keyboard, then we simply need to restart the game, which is actually a lot simpler than, um, uh, than you might think. So here we're going to say um, uh, else if event.key equals r. So if we've hit the r key, 
then all we're simply going to do is reset these two things. So our snake is a new snake, uh, our game is a new game, and it'll just start drawing these two uh, new objects out in the loop. Uh, so I've got a syntax error. What have I changed? Ah, sorry, else if. Awesome, let's try and press R now. Yes, great. So that's working all good now. Let me see what kind of score I can get. Not very good. Just testing out the game as well, just to make sure we've got no bugs. The speed seems okay. If you want to change the speed, the way you can do that is just change this FPS cap. So if you raised to a number that's closer to 60, you'll get a faster speed. I found for me about 20 is okay. So thanks for tuning in. I hope you got something out of that video. It's been a lot of fun for me making these games uh, and working with the Ruby 2D library. I've got a video planned for next week, which I hope will be a bunch of fun. And as always, if you've got any questions or suggestions for future videos, then please leave them in the comments below. Otherwise, I will catch you next time.